You can easily provision, or create, a Java Cloud Service instance by using the Instance Creation Wizard, as I'll demonstrate here. Prior to launching the wizard, I will have already provisioned an Oracle Database Cloud Service instance and, just to be safe, recorded the database username and password for that instance. Now I'll launch the wizard. First, I'll provide basic service information. My service name must start with a letter and cannot contain any special characters, nor be longer than 50 characters. I'll select a production level service that will provide the clustering, backup and restoration, patching and rollback, and scaling support I need. A monthly metering frequency works best for the high volume of usage over extended periods that I expect. It can also mean a cost savings over the hourly rate. Next, I'll select an Oracle WebLogic server release that supports cloud infrastructures that span web server, application server, and load balancer tiers. And finally, I'll select the appropriate WebLogic server edition. Next, I'll provide my service details. First, I'll define the shape of the service and provide access information for integrated services, administration consoles, and a secure shell. Compute shapes are pre-configured and determine the processing power of a service instance. I'll select an all-purpose shape rather than one that's memory intensive. Since I might need to connect to the instance by using a secure shell client, I'll specify the public key of the secure shell pair. While I could specify the name of an existing key, I'm going to load a new one from my file system. By default, a cluster will already be configured, but I want to add a couple of managed servers to it. This will automatically enable a load balancer, which I'll configure momentarily. Next, I'll identify the WebLogic Administrator. And now, so that I can access my WebLogic and other administrative consoles, I'll select this advanced setting. Next, I'll enter access information for the Oracle Database Cloud Service instance that contains the Oracle Fusion Middleware Component Schemas. This is why it's helpful to record the database user credentials. Now, I'll configure the Load Balancer, which shares work across managed servers and automatically redirects traffic during routine maintenance activities. Here, too, I'll select one of the all-purpose compute shapes. This policy passes each new request to the managed server that has the fewest connections, ensuring a smooth distribution when managed servers get bogged down. Finally, I'll define access information for the Oracle Storage Cloud Container instance that will store the service instance backups. If it doesn't already exist, Java Cloud Service will create this container. Now I'll confirm the details and create the instance. I can see that the service instance has been added and will be provisioned and running soon. I can check the provisioning progress here and here. I'll refresh the screen and my service has been provisioned. I'm ready to manage my instance and deploy my applications to the cloud. To learn more about Oracle Java Cloud Service, visit us online at cloud.oracle.com, the Oracle Learning Library, or the Java Cloud Service Help Center. And thanks for watching.